the uh, the question is whether or not uh, you can see this as this is a small an improvement of reversal of artery disease, as you can see. I should share with you that these angiograms that I'm sharing with you now were all reviewed in triplicate in the Cleveland Clinic Angiography Core Laboratory by senior technicians that do this all day long for national medical trials. So when we look at some of these angiograms uh, as follow-up to that original study, when I give you a certain percentage of reversal, I know it's accurate because of this evaluation. This is a 67 year old uh, retired pediatrician. You are looking at the left anterior descending coronary artery. And from the arrow on the left to the arrow on the right, the increase in improvement was 10%, which is about as small as the naked eye can see. This next one is a 58 year old factory worker, you're looking at the circumflex artery that goes to the back of the heart. And from the arrow on the left to the arrow on the right, it was described as a 20% improvement. Uh, this next is a 54 year old security guard. This time you're looking at the right coronary artery. And from the arrow on the left, to the arrow on the right, the improvement was described as 30%. Now this handsome young fellow, Dr. Crow, is in the first chapter in my book. Uh, in 1996, at age 44, Dr. Crow was getting chest pain. He had a cholesterol of 156. He was not overweight. He exercised regularly. He was not diabetic, he was not a smoker, he did not have high blood pressure. So finally in October of 1996, cardiology worked him up, they could find nothing of significance. A month later in November, he was finishing his surgical schedule and sat down to write post-operative orders when suddenly he felt the elephant sitting on his chest, pain in his left jaw, shoulder, arm, he was having a heart attack and he was whipped down to the catheterization laboratory. The catheterization was initiated. He had a cardiac arrest. He was resuscitated. They finished the catheterization with one more cardiac arrest. <clears throat> and then three days later, when he was stable, uh, he was discharged. But he was very depressed at the time of discharge because he found that at the time of his uh, angiogram, the entire lower one third bracketed here by this yellow line, this entire lower one third of the left anterior coronary artery disease was all moth eaten and diseased over too long a segment to just ram in, pound in, stent after stent. And it was too far down the artery for bypass. So he was very depressed and felt they weren't able to do much for him. So two weeks after his heart attack, uh, Ann and I had Joe and his wife out for dinner. And I, wait a minute, sorry, here we go. We'll get it right in a moment. There we go. And I'm uh, out for dinner and uh, Joe, I said, look, you've been eating this absolutely horrible Western diet and you've got the typical Western disease. Why don't you think about going plant-based? We've got 10 years of data. And he looked at me and he said, okay, they really couldn't do much else for me. Uh, I'll give it a shot, but I'm not gonna take any of those statin drugs. I don't trust them. Too many side effects. I said, fine, that's your call, no problem. He, over the next two and a half years, he became the absolute personification of commitment to whole food plant-based nutrition. His total cholesterol plummeted. His LDL cholesterol went from 98 to 38. <clears throat> then two and a half years after his heart attack, he had another angiogram. Now up in the surgical office areas, our doors are three doors apart. And so on noontime, on the day on which I knew earlier that morning, he had had his follow-up angiogram. I walked over and got myself into his office and there he was sitting behind the desk. I said, Joe, I understand you had the follow-up angiogram earlier today. Mind sharing with me, how did it go? 
And he said, he came around, put his arms around me, said, you know, I think we're doing okay. I said, well, would there be any chance that I could uh, see the angiogram? He said, sure. Now, that was really quite exciting. It was one of the more profound reversals that we've, that we've seen. And I think it's important that I share with you the fact that not uncommonly, when the patients are young and the plaque is young and made up of inflammation, fat, and cholesterol, the body can do a pretty amazing job of reversing it. However, when the patients are older and the plaque has been there for decades and it's made up of fibrosis and scar and calcification, it's probably not going to go away completely or very much. But nevertheless, even those patients should be able to get back to full activity of daily living without restriction. And before I let you go today, it's my responsibility to show you how that can happen. Now, this next thing, interesting is also a young, young man, a 45-year-old gentleman from Florida who had a tire attack on July 14th of 2017. And I think if you will follow that arrow, you will see that extremely severely pinched area of this uh, obtuse marginal artery, a branch off the circumflex that goes to the back of the heart. And it was described as being 80% blocked. Now, the patient had other blocked arteries so that the cardiologist was recommending to him that he have bypass surgery but he had a book called Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. And he told the cardiologist he was going to follow that book because they didn't want to have that operation. Well, the cardiologist really remained quite skeptical. And a year later, he had another angiogram of that same area in July of 2018. And now you can see it was no longer 80% blocked. It was now 40% blocked. Well, at this point, uh, the patient switched to a different cardiologist. And the new cardiologist, also a year and a half later, was still curious about what was going on. So he had his third angiogram, and now it was all gone. Now, the lesson that here is really, I think, rather profound. Uh, this man absolutely vanquished his disease without the help of a single physician. Now, I happened to find out about this because it was after this final angiogram where the disease was gone that the patient uh, wrote to me and thanked me for writing the book, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, and he also sent me these uh, angiograms. But I think there's such a powerful lesson here if we could only get the cardiovascular community to understand it. What possible rationale is there not to permit or at least offer the option of whole food plant-based nutrition to every patient with cardiovascular disease with the opportunity to halt their disease and often see significant elements of disease reversal? I should share with you that it was <clears throat> five years ago that I was invited by the American College of Cardiology to become a member and join their nutrition committee. Why? Because the, the whole thrust uh, of the committee is to try to see if we can educate cardiologists about the causation of the illness that they have been designated to treat. Cardiologists actually are really are quite good fellows, but they have zero training in medical school or practically zero in their postgraduate training about nutrition. All right. That simply is a summary of the three angiograms I just showed you. They're all in a row from 80% to 40% to normal. All right. Now, back to this study of those, that first study. Uh, uh, we found that there were uh, 18 patients who stayed with us the entire 12 years. I wanted to know 
how many coronary events, that is heart attack, stroke, and death, excuse me, not death, how many coronary events, these patients in our study, how many events of progressive disease had they sustained in the eight years prior to coming into our study? And they had these 49 events of worsening disease in the hands of expert cardiologists during this time period. However, once they came with us over the next 12 years, 17 of these 18 had no further events. Yes, we did have one uh, little sheep who wandered from the flock after six years, got into the <laughs> French fries, lamb chops, glazed donuts, more angina, had a bypass, and now is back with the flock. But it, he does, I share with you this, so he does exem uh, exemplify the point that I'm, try that I'm trying to make. All right, now, as happy and as proud as we were as some of these results from the early study, boy, did we get hammered. Dr. Esselstyn, that is a small study. Dr. Esselstyn, it was not randomized. Dr. Esselstyn, that's a, your diet is very severe and extreme. And what makes you think you could ever repeat a larger study with similar results? So we did. Our first study was in 1995. This one was in 2014, published in the Journal of Family Practice. And I think there's some key points that I want to make. And one is that uh, the question was whether or not these patients would adhere. And sure enough, we found that the adherence rate was 89.3%. That's almost 90% who were adhering uh, to our diet program over this close to four years of follow-up. And <clears throat> we've had a no any number of physicians who have visited our program, but they may occasionally call and say, Dr. Esselstyn, I'm just ha not having much luck in getting patients to follow this. And I said, well, why don't we talk a little bit of how we do it? And maybe there'll be a, <clears throat> a few uh, wrinkles or points that, uh, that you can borrow, it might help. Because if you're going to get somebody to make a lifestyle change, you are going to have to show them respect. And the only way that I know to show a patient respect is to give them my time. So in the present format that we're using now, now is that once a month I conduct an intensive counseling seminar where usually no more than 18 or 20 patients. And they're gonna learn all about how they have created their disease and precisely how we are going to empower them as the locus of control to halt and to reverse their disease. Now, in addition, since I'm a little bit old fashioned, 10 days before these patients are gonna to come to our seminar, which is a single day, five and a half hours, my secretary will give me a list of these patients and their phone numbers, and I will call every one of them myself personally because I want to get my arms around their story. At the same time, provide them an opportunity to ask questions of me so that coming to the seminar, we have a strong platform from which we can all move forward. And I know of, of very few cardiologists who see their patients five and a half hours, but you can just imagine how absolutely I am going to beat into their heads <laughs> the absolute importance of the endothelial cell and nitric oxide. Because once you have a patient sitting there who's had a heart attack and they've listened for five and a half hours, they now know the only reason they had their heart attack was their food had so destroyed their endothelial production of nitric oxide they ran short of nitric oxide and couldn't prevent themselves from making these blockages in plaque. All right. Now, the other thing that was key, how did these patients do on this new study? Well, of those who were adherent, of the 177 out of 198 who were adherent, there was one gentleman in China totally misbehaving. He had a tendency to have high blood pressure anyway eating all the salt off the street <laughs> restaurants 
and had a hypertensive episode and had a small cerebellar stroke, stroke from which he recovered. On the other hand, those 21 patients who were non-adherent, 62% in the follow-up period had a progression of their disease. All right. Now I wanna spend a moment. I've decided it was time to compare our results with some of the really better known cardiovascular results, which different institutions are fairly proud of. And let's make some sense out of this by looking at first the box on the right, which underneath it, it says Lyon. That's the Lyon diet heart study. It's a Mediterranean diet study. And at the end of four years, 25% of those persons in the study had had heart attack, stroke, or death. We both to the box just to the left of that, the natural history of coronary artery disease. At the end of four years, this is a study out of Columbia Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, 20% heart attack, stroke, and death. To the left of that, Bill Bowden's Courage study. At the end of four years, 19.4% heart attack, stroke, and death. So collectively then, of those three, somewhere around 22, 23%, then go to the left, there we are. Six tenths of 1%, one patient. That's over a 30 fold difference between these results. Why are our results so profoundly different? The answer is because we instruct the patient about the causation of the illness. Ever since the days of Hippocrates, there's been essentially a basic covenant of trust that whenever possible, the caregiver will share with the patient what is the causation of the illness. And sadly today, in cardiovascular medicine, that's not being done. So what do we see? Comparing this approach with the usual approach, there's no mortality from the diet. There's no morbidity from the diet. Obviously, when there are stents and bypasses, those procedures can cause morbidity and mortality. Now, the exciting thing is there's no additional expense and the benefits improve with time. And when you think about it, anybody who's had a heart attack is now petrified walking around with the sword of Damocles hanging over their head. When do I get my next heart attack, when does the other shoe fall? Well, nonsense. You can make yourself heart attack proof. You can thicken and strengthen the cap over your plaque so it never ruptures and you make yourself heart attack proof. All right, now let's take a look at, uh, on the left, you are looking at a pulse volume at the ankle the strength of the pulse at the ankle in a 52 year old gentleman who was coming to my office who had to stop five times crossing the skyway because of pain in his right calf because of a partially blocked artery in his right thigh. However, I was so focused on his heart, I totally forgot about his leg until 10 months into the study. One day he said to me, Dr. Esselstyn, do you recall when I first started seeing you that I was stopping five times crossing the sky with your office? Yeah. He said, you know, in the last month, it stopped. The pain is gone. I said, well, Don, back you go to the vascular lab. And we repeated the pulse volume on the right. And it is now double, double. So we suddenly had in 1986, within 15 months of starting our study, we now suddenly had absolutely irrefutable, rock solid, irrevocable science that food and food alone was capable of reversing cardiovascular disease. And somebody's gonna say, well, wait a minute. What about the statin drugs? Well, wait a minute. This is 1986. There were no statin drugs. So think about it. There are two examples that I've given you today of profound disease reversal with patients who'd had no statins. So the, those patients who don't take, don't take statins or cannot take them 
if they're willing to make these kinds of significant nutritional changes, can do absolutely just as well. Now, here happens to be another. And this is a, uh, uh, actually, this is a 78-year-old um, retired high school chemistry teacher. And in his retirement, he and his wife loved to enter square dance contests. But it was during the fast square dances that he was getting bilateral calf pain. And he saw some vascular surgeons who got the images you see here. And he did not like the big operation that they were describing he would have to have. And he came, uh, he found us over the internet, came to see us. And during counseling, he said, Dr. Esselstyn, if I choose your method, how long will it take me to get rid of this calf pain? So I looked at him with great wisdom in my face and said, probably about 10 or 11 months if you stick with our method. Three months later, I got a phone call. Dr. Esselstyn, you do not speak the truth. The pain is gone. All right, now, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what part of the world those of you who are in the audience are today, but in Cleveland, when you're on television and you're watching a mystery or you're watching a sporting event, just before the advertisement comes on, you will hear the mellifluous tones of the advertisers say something like, when the moment is right, will you be ready? Now, we all know that the penile artery is really quite uh, tiny compared to the coronary artery to the heart. And not infrequently, before somebody comes down with heart disease, they may have the canary in the coal mine. They may find that they're no longer able to uh, raise the flag. However, all is not lost. Not occasionally, I will get a phone call 10 or 11 months after I've counseled somebody. Dr. Esselstyn, yes, this is Mr. So-and-so, sure enough. Yeah, Doc, I really thought I ought to give you a call because recently something has come up. And I'm wondering if I don't owe you another check. Now, I promise you, before we would wrap this up, that <clears throat> uh, I wanted to try to explain how it is that the patients who have a, a plaque that is unresponsive it's been there for decades. It's made up of fibrosis and scar and calcification. Well, let's look at the left, what we call here a PET scan. And the PET scan on the left, you can see where it is orange or where it is yellow. And that indicates there's a good blood supply there. But on the one on the left, you will see there's a patch on the right side of green. And the green indicates that that's poor blood supply. This was in a 60-year-old downtown Cleveland stockbroker with a cholesterol of 248. And it was at the time that he had that PET scan on the left that I counseled him. Then three weeks later, we brought him back and we repeated the same PET scan. 10 days after he made his nutrition switch, his cholesterol had gone from 248 to 137. And there you are. How in the world does that happen? We haven't washed out or any blockage in, in just three weeks. What's going on here? Well, what you're seeing here is the heart without any muscle. And you can see that there are the three main coronary arteries, the right, the left anterior descending, and the circumflex. And those are the ones that you see now, they initially are riding on the surface of the heart. Those are the ones that get all the publicity with stents and bypass and so forth. But look where they go. Every single one of those three major arteries, they all dive into the heart muscle to carry the oxygen and nutrients to the cardiac muscle. And you can see, as they dive into the heart muscle, they branch into literally thousands and thousands of these small vessels. So it was about six or eight years ago that I called 
to Rodriguez, who is the chairman of cardiovascular pathology at the Cleveland Clinic, who dissects approximately 200 hearts a year from the deceased. And I asked Rod, I said, can you share with me this? Once the artery has dived into the heart muscle, do you ever see good old standard garden variety blockages as we, as we would see in the major coronary artery while they're on the surface of the heart? His answer, never. So now I really had an understanding of what we were seeing. Because think about it this way. When we first see these patients, they are so beaten down. Their poor endothelial cells are just absolutely been crushed. So they're making very little nitric oxide, which is the great blood vessel dilator. And believe it or not, your endothelial cells have now become your enemy. They are your enemy because they are making two molecules, endothelin and thromboxane. And endothelin and thromboxane are what we call vasoconstrictors. So think about it. When we see these patients initially, they're hardly making any, nit any nitric oxide and they are making vasoconstrictors. So this enormous entire intramuscular path of all these small, tiny branch vessels are all pinched. They're narrowed. They're even squished because of thromboxane and endothelin. So what happens is suddenly these patients start eating correctly. They no longer are injuring their endothelium. It starts to make more and more nitric oxide a vasodilator. And most important of all, it stops constricting the thousands and thousands and thousands of von vessels that you see that are intramuscular here. So when you open up that enormous pathway, then what, what happens is absolutely just what you saw here from the left to the right. Now we have reperfusion within three weeks. And this is so beautifully correlates when you're talking with these patients and they say, Dr. Esselstyn, I don't know what's going on. I've had this angina for two years. Once I've switched my diet within six or eight weeks, it's markedly improved. Sometimes it's even gone away that soon. So Pretty darn exciting to think about what's happening. So let's summarize the measures of cardiovascular disease reversal. I've shown you reversal on the angiogram. <clears throat> it reverses on the stress test. I've shown you reversal on the PET scan. Same thing, obviously, it will reverse in the arteries to your brain from the carotid. We've talked about the pulse volume reversal and the reversal of, of the symptoms of angina claudication, and erectile dysfunction. Well, you've been a very, very patient audience. I want to uh, summarize before I answer some questions for you. Uh, for those of you who haven't been to Cleveland, uh, I worked for many years on the eighth floor of this A building uh, as a surgeon, but I really want those of you in New York and surroundings to know what the trees look like in Cleveland in February. <laughs> However, uh, actually, uh, I when I retired from surgery, I was hired by the Wellness Institute. Now, the Wellness Institute, the budget is more modest, but the uh, morale is really quite high. And one thing I've learned since uh, 60 years of being away from medical school, yes, brain, brains are important. However, Nothing, nothing, nothing is as important as persistence. Persistence, persistence best exemplified by this young damsel uh, in Life Magazine, 1939, trying and trying to learn how to do the splits. And it's tough to do the splits, but she stuck with it and stuck with it. Sure enough, the other day, I guess it was in downtown Melville that it was Steve Shore who spotted her. And she had got it right. 